everybody, Brandon Jones here from GameTrailers.com. I'm joined by Kyle Bossman. Hi, everybody! Okay. What? More? No, it's like a vampire! Hi, everybody! <laughs> or the Count from Sesame Street and Daniel Bloodworth. Hi. And we are here, if you could not, like, snicker, like, immediately from a joke that you made yourself... That'd be great. We could really move on with the episode. Yeah, faster, can't do Kyle. it. I so sorry. It. We are here because uh, the amazing developer Igarashi has finally released his Kickstarter video, and we're here to give it a score. Are you ready? Absolutely. Let's do it. So yeah, Kickstarter videos. That's something we actually talk about a lot on. Uh, let's all go to the trailers or the newly formed trailer score, but they're great because one thing that I, I do appreciate that does help me get pumped for trailers is that desperation. I mean, that's all that trailers are about. You know, it's like sure. we really, really want you to be excited about this game. We really want you to you know spread the word. There's nothing more desperate than a Kickstarter trailer. <laughs> Which I guess one of the things that's really great is I I don't really get a desperate vibe from this. Right. You know, like I this this like he is just strutting around this castle, just completely confident. You know me. This, you may be familiar with this, my legacy. See. Yeah, this is classic Iga. Yeah, this is this is so good. So I, I think anyone that's like seen him like on stage at TGS, like this is yeah. So I think this is perfectly in line for you know, his personality, what we can expect from the game. We see absolutely no gameplay, anything running in real time whatsoever, uh, which I think can be potentially dangerous for a Kickstarter. But I think he, this guy can totally pull it off. Uh, my favorite moment in the world is when he chucks the glass on the floor. Yeah, you know, directly calls out all of the people that he said he's spoken to that you know refuse to fund his game. Well, I think, but you see, when it when it comes to uh, yeah, when you talk about that, like being dangerous to not show concept art i think you get into that territory like when you have somebody who either hasn't made a game for 20 years or you know they haven't made a game at all and they're like hey we're gonna make a video game and they don't have a clue what they're doing and, and, and he knows he's he's directed these projects or, or i don't know exact exact roles but you know he's been in charge of a lot of these projects before so he knows what he's getting himself into and I haven't paid uh, a lot of attention to the development process, which I know has been kind of a rocky road for Mighty Number no. Nine. But has, has Mighty Number no. Nine had the idea? Have they been as upfront about how it's basically Mega Man, but not Mega Man, uh, as Igarashi is being about this is Castlevania, but it's not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, very same. I would yeah. say it's almost similar. I mean, he's calling this Egovania. You go to www.egovania.com, which is very on the nose. But yeah, th he's clearly making a Castlevania game, and, and I don't understand why he shouldn't be shy about that. So, dangerous to do comedy. Anything comedic for a Kickstarter trailer. Yeah. Uh, and I think the comedy works uh, pretty well in this. Um, I think one of the, the core rules for uh, for comedy in a Kickstarter trailer. One, you just don't overdo it. Don't have comedy be the entire thing. Have it be obviously referencing things we understand. Uh, if you're a famous developer like this who's making a game that's in a style that we'll all be familiar with, have the jokes be somewhat in line with uh, uh, what you're trying to tell us and never take any moment away from telling us stuff. So if you're going to do a joke, have it be a part of giving us information about the game. So I think the 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 most jokey that this trailer gets, other than we just saw him tra transform into a cloud of bats, is when he walks into the room, the torture chamber, and he, you know, cranks it down. But he's he is saying, like, I'm going to have more weapons in the game, I'm going to have more bosses, we're going to have more stuff that we add to the game, um, and, you know, chooses to you know, put a little comedy in there. Also, live action, dangerous, potentially, <laughs> you know, to go shoot somewhere, uh, especially if you're trying to recreate, you know, areas that we would believe would be in a Castlevania game or, or in Bloodstained. Um, you know, some fun references. Obviously, this is, you know, the beginning of Super Castlevania 4 that we're getting a reference to at the beginning of the, the tombstone exploding and the, the purple bat coming out and flying into the castle. I think this is great. I don't really know what I need, you know, in this. Obviously, I think, the, you know, the production value could maybe be upped a little bit more with the right. effects. Uh, obviously, it wasn't cheap to, like, rent out this castle um, and uh, uh, shoot in all these rooms. Or maybe it was. There was a special thanks there, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, be, I bet he just had, you know, a field day when he was shooting it. I bet there's all sorts of outtakes that they were like, we'd love to put this in the Kickstarter trailer, but we want to keep it down. He probably, um, he knows a few castle guys. He's like, no, no, it's okay, I know a guy. I can get us a castle. One thing I actually didn't think of until this moment that I think a lot of Kickstarter trailers could learn, um, other than just his, you know, unabashed bravado, is he gets to the point right away. 
And I, I, I think yeah. I've seen a lot of Kickstarter trailers kind of like do a thing in the beginning that it can be like 30 seconds to a minute long. And then when that's over, it's like, hi, I'm Bill. Um, you might recognize me from this game. I want to make this. So I like he just steps out immediately and is like, hi, you know me. You know what I want to do. Um, you obviously you saw this coming because I, I made uh, the website beforehand. So I like the directness of that. I like getting right to it. On the other end, I like uh, waiting till the very end to reveal your title. I think that's cool. We talk a lot about with regular trailers, you know, having a huge reveal of your title is impactful. It works in a Kickstarter trailer even, and props for that. But is, of course, spoiled by you going to the Kickstarter page and seeing it before you click on the play on the video. True, yeah. But I mean, when I walked in the office this morning, it was Huberg saying, hey, look at this thing. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't oh, see the word Bloodstained right. until I saw the word Bloodstained, which is so, pretty cool. So, advice to all trailers lover, lovers out there, get your own Michael Huber, who can, uh, <laughs> and show up to work late. Those are the two essential ingredients to be surprised <laughs> yeah. in just the right but way. Just the title. It all works really well, and I, I think again, it's it's the, that confidence, you know, like he just looks you right in the eye, he tells you this is what we're gonna do. I believe in this. I know you believe in this. You know, we're gonna just show them they're wrong. Let's do it together. You know, there, there, there's none of this. You know, like you know, I think other people like it. You know, like there's there's none of the wishy wash. And and I think you're you're perfectly right in that. You know, how long is this? It's under three minutes. That's, yeah, the length is wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, um, and I, that actually <laughs> brings me to my final point. Uh, we have two final points. That actually was why I'm gonna uh, ding this a little bit. Oh. Um, I, I, w I would like a little bit more information. I'd like to. I mean, just tell us who the main character is. I think might be key. I mean, they they do on the page. If you scroll down the Kickstarter page, you can find more stuff. Hmm. But I, I do think it's it, it can be potentially non-exciting to just kind of like throw some art at me and it's like I don't know what this means like okay that guy looks cool is that a playable character is that and basically just how does the character fit into it um, obviously you don't want to go on too long I think three minutes is a great length for it so maybe we could like shorten the beat the beats by like actually seeing him open up the metal door and walk towards the torture device and maybe take that time and, and give us a little more context as far as like what the game is actually going to be um, other than just we trust you and you make great games and, and uh, uh, based on the style it obviously fits into um, uh, mostly it seems Order of Ecclesia and uh, I'm trying to think of the two characters with the with Soma was that the main character in the yeah, there was what was the last game that oh. came out on DS and the first game that came out. You mean the last game that came out on Game Boy Advance and the first game that came out on DS. Yeah, the the distance, right? Or sorrow. Yeah, it seems Wait, seems I'm, like her, you know, strong I'm getting mixed up. brunette female character. So yeah, maybe a little more uh, just just about the story. Um, just to kind of set it up, just to show that like they, it does have a name. You don't have to scroll down to you know uh, eight page lengths to actually get to like any more about the story or the characters and stuff. And one thing that like I gotta admit, I'm really disappointed of is like choose so so for those of you who don't know so the whole thing started with egavania dot com mm -hmm. yeah. that had a uh, animation of him sitting in the chair 16 bit style igarashi and he asked you to choose a sword or a whip which has no relevance on this project apparently i um, mean they if, saw they saw the character had like there's a sword and there's a whip and like an axe right weapons but yeah. like there's no emphasis put on the decision of choosing one or the other uh, okay. um uh, I, I guess the more you I didn't spend a ton of time with the website, but I heard that there were like clans or something that like if you picked one, it would put you in a certain clan. Yeah, I was in the clan of Nine Tails. Those clans uh, also play into um, the game and play into Kickstarter bonuses. So if you if you uh, uh, donate above a certain amount, uh, you'll be put in a certain clan. Okay. Uh, and you can pick that. Uh, if you uh, give sixty dollars and you get the retail copy of the game, you will get the Mighty Sword Whip, a Kickstarter exclusive weapon. Hmm. Uh, that would be so rad if it was forever exclusive to Kickstarter. That that's something that people. Could really enjoy. It is dubbed the only weapon powerful enough to unite teams' sword and whip, <laughs> which again just seems like promo. It seems like okay, that all right. It's exciting like to be teamed up with other fans and for us to not just do a simple give us money we'll make the game you know to have like a little deeper than that but I was really surprised that when he announced the game like the core of the gameplay mechanic or something, the core of the story or something didn't you know revolve around this decision between the sword and the whip because it is an interesting decision you know like it, it is you know like there have been characters in the castlevania games that, that wield swords and those that wield whips and i think it would be interesting if you like maybe had to choose one going into the game and that would just you know pick your character or, or pick the moves that they could do um and it's just kind of not brought up at all and so I don't want to have expectations and, and, and base trailers off expectations, but I will have expectations based on trailers that set up expectations. You know, it's like the, the beginning of this advertising campaign, that what the website is called Sword or Whip. And Sword or Whip doesn't really seem that relevant to the actual experience, so it was a bit of a letdown. 
And not something I really noticed until later. I was like, oh, wait. And I, like, scoured. I literally did the word search for whip on the, <laughs> the Kickstarter page. and went down, and it was just like, no, there's just one weapon, and, and that's about it. And as much as I love it, you know, it's like I, I do want to... Uh, th- this is one of the better Kickstarter announcements. I think it's very direct. Uh, another Kickstarter trailer might come along one day that has way better production values and is way more flashier and stuff like that. So I want to reserve anything above a 9. But uh, because it put a smile on my face and because I love this man, I'll give it an 8.6. Uh, yeah, I'm comparing it to other Kickstarters. I think it, I think it compares favorable. I'll give it a 9.3. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is very good. One thing I did want to point out that I think is really cool about the speech here uh, is that he says, I have other people who want to give me money. This is just proving that there's demand. Uh, that is extremely honest. You see that with a lot of games that are Kickstarter, Kickstarter funded, uh, but never really mentioned as much. Ukulele, I think, got funded very quickly because it had like gameplay footage. You know, it's a disadvantage not to have that. Uh, but the s- sincerity and honesty of this and, it, you know, its vibe is why I think it's so good. I think just showing 2D art works, especially for this genre, because yeah. it's all 2D. So I think you can get away with just showing some character designs and then you're like, ah, okay. It's not like the final product's going to be way different than that. It's like, no, you just make that guy move his arms around and then we're good to go. Yeah, that, I mean, I think that, that one shot they had where there's a screenshot, I think that works. Uh, I give it a 8.8. Um, I, I do think... It would be good for them to have some test footage, but uh, I, I do find this very entertaining. And again, just his 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 directness, his kind of come in and, and own, owning this space, and uh, and and owning the audience along with that, I think really works very well. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> at time of recording, they're close. Yeah, at the time of this recording, it is at four hundred four hundred forty three thousand five hundred fifty four. 32 days to go, uh, will, you know, most likely uh, reach its goal today and blow right past it. So, congratulations, sir. I hope uh, you get an exciting game. 8.9 for your Kickstarter trailer for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. He had to do blank of the night, didn't he? Sure. <laughs> he, had to slip that in he knows what he's doing. He knows 100% <laughs> what he's doing. I guess that is, uh, it, perhaps there would be a symphony played during a ritual, but this is, you know, following that. Uh, so well done, sir. Uh, shut up and take my money. Can't wait to play it. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you, Blood. Can't wait to see more. See you next episode.